There's nothing on TV quite like Adult Swim's The Eric Andre Show. When it comes together, it's a messy and hilarious package of freeform zaniness. It takes a lot of work to put such a unique and original program together, which means there's no shortage of wild behind-the-scenes stories. A television show makes it to the air after its creators and producers follow a very specific process. A writer comes up with a script or outline, convinces an agent it's a bankable concept, and then the agent pitches it to a network or production company. If all goes well, executives will ask for a script and then use it as the basis for an introductory or pilot episode. If they like that, more episodes get ordered. This is not how the Eric Andre show made it to Adult Swim. Andre told Spin, I knew it was too crazy and visual and too much like an absurdist stream of consciousness show to really sell on paper. So instead of writing a script and essentially begging someone to pay for him to make a pilot of it, he skipped some steps and made a proof of concept episode on his own and on the cheap. He explained, We rented out this little semi-abandoned, semi-illegal bodega in the middle of Brooklyn. We just cleaned it up a little bit, threw up curtains. After compiling the footage, Andre further cut costs by learning the editing program Final Cut and cutting together the pilot himself. The project took about a year, and after multiple networks, quote, thought it sucked, he found an ally in Adult Swim. The Eric Andre Show is one of the more original shows to hit TV in recent years, but it didn't emerge in a vacuum. Eric Andre's influences include sketch comedy, Adult Swim pioneers, and 70s television. He tells the Huffington Post, It's basically like Space Ghost as a live-action show. Space Ghost Coast to Coast was a 1994-2008 talk show in which animated, reimagined superhero Space Ghost interviewed confused celebrities from his galactic lair. Andre says his show also contains DNA from The Tom Green Show, Sasha Baron Cohen's reality-blurring Da Ali G Show, and the syndicated, purposely cheap-looking 1970s talk show parody Fernwood Tonight. Other shows from which Andre found inspiration include Jackass and Chappelle's Show for its quick sketch format. The Eric Andre Show may be a deconstructed talk show, but it's a talk show nonetheless. Host Eric Andre knew he wanted a sidekick, the way Johnny Carson could play off Ed McMahon or Conan O'Brien and Andy Richter. He told the Huffington Post, I knew I was so crazy. I needed somebody just as out there comedically, but opposite in energy to be the voice of reason. So he turned to someone who ran in the same New York stand-up comedy circles, Hannibal Burris, who had yet to achieve household name status from a growing resume that included stints as a Saturday Night Live writer and a Broad City cast member. Andre felt that Burris, who exudes a calm, mellow persona, was perfect. Really My sick. seat feels like, um, like it's alive or something. <laughs> yeah, we got snakes. What human traits. Andre also appreciates and is keenly aware of how his show is one of the few on TV with two African-American leads. He told The Fader, I want to prove to America that black people are the most diverse, creative group of people and we can express any way we want. We're both very different, and we both also somehow connect on a certain level, and we both kind of have our own unique point of view, and it's fun to show people new and unique black perspectives. I did not get the job at Fruit Loops. My body is now your communion. Please eat from me. As a cable programming block that airs only at night, Adult Swim isn't bound by the same constraints as other television enterprises. Its programming tends to be more edgy, envelope-pushing, or straight-up weird, as evidenced by hits like Rick and Morty, Tim and Eric Awesome Show Great Job, and The Eric Andre Show. But while its stable of talents has lots of freedom to follow their warped creative visions, Adult Swim is still a television network that can survive only as long as it doesn't alienate advertisers or push away too many viewers. The network's Standard and Practices department placed just a few limitations on Andre. He explained the arrangement to spin that certain kinds of self-harm and drug use and making fun of specific gods are like the three S&P issues that come up. Under the heading of religious mockery, Andre says he's allowed to curse the heavens and challenge the Almighty to strike him with lightning, but if he added the word Jesus to the bit, it would get axed. Have you seen my dog? Uh-huh. Describe him to me! Describe him to me! The Eric Andre Show also incorporates public, guerrilla-style comedy caught on tape, where planning isn't really a possibility and things can go very wrong very quickly. Andre explained in his interview with the Huffington Post, All the bits where I thought I was definitely going to get assaulted, I didn't, and then the bit that I thought would be the least violent was the most. That event would be the time he, quote, got beat up at a Mensa convention. Andre tried to crash a meeting of the organization for the superintelligent while wearing a suit of armor, all while claiming to have an IQ of 400. After being thoroughly manhandled and forced out of the building by a pushy Mensa member, Andre voluntarily fled before security guards arrived. The natural reaction to Andre's antics isn't always violence, derision, and hostility. On one occasion, random strangers felt sorry for him. 
Andre related one such story on Speakeasy. I did a bit where I dressed up like a cop and we went up to Harlem and I handcuffed myself around a light post and dropped my pants before anybody showed up. And I was going, ah, uh, could somebody help me? And all these people gathered and they're like, how did you get in that situation? I'm like, it's a long story, just please help me out. Andre fondly recalled how, quote, the community came together to help him get uncuffed and his pants back on. If anyone ever thought the pranks pulled on an unknowing and unwitting public throughout the run of the Eric Andre show were less than authentic, this story about Andre facing legal consequences and experiencing the temporary loss of his personal freedom should dispel that notion. While filming a bit for the first season of the show, Andre, quote, crashed a town hall meeting where the mayor was speaking. He explained to the fader, Vote for me for class president, and I'll put beer in the water fountains and cameras in the girls' locker rooms. Woo! Go Bobcats! As it was an official town meeting in the town of Rancho Cucamonga, California, the place was full of law enforcement personnel who acted quickly. He further related to the fader. They escorted me out, and I was like, don't tase me, bro. I also told a cop my name was John Coltrane. They believed him, apparently having never heard of the famous jazz musician whose name Andre nicked. Nevertheless, the sheriffs eventually took Andre to the local jail, where he had to spend some time, explaining, just for the night, but I had to go to court and get a lawyer. Very expensive. Concurrent with starring on the early seasons of The Eric Andre Show, Eric Andre moonlighted with a supporting role on the dark ABC sitcom Don't Trust to Be in Apartment 23. While definitely one of the edgier shows on a broadcast network schedule, it was still a sitcom airing in primetime on a channel owned by Walt Disney. According to an Andre interview with the Huffington Post, some executives at ABC were at best tentative about his bizarre adult swim series and, quote, not thrilled at worst. When he tried to include Don't Trust to Be in Apartment 23 on press releases for The Eric Andre Show, the network intervened, as he explained it. And then, like 14 people from ABC flew in on helicopters, were like, don't mention us in the adult swim show. The extreme nature of The Eric Andre Show means pain and injury is a possibility, if not a probability, for its host. One of the series' signature bits finds Andre jumping through walls and destroying his desk at the top of every episode. He's gonna let that happen? Hmm? He's gonna let that happen? That's his desk. I, I stand here. While the chance of serious bodily damage there is limited because the production makes the furniture thin and easily breakable, Andre has still gotten himself seriously hurt during both in-studio bits and in out-in-the-world film stunts. He aggravated a pre-existing injury when he tried to lift co-host Hannibal Burris's chair. He explained the injury to Spin. It was way heavier than I anticipated and I tore my back in half. I had to like marine crawl back to the video monitors and take a 20 minute break. Oh my God. His most painful scrape, long-term knee damage, came as the result of a bit where he hid in a garbage can so as to hop out and scare people who walked by. He said, I'm in physical therapy for it. My knees are both out of the track. Most notably, however, was the mysterious injury Andre sustained to one of his buttocks, which Andre explained matter-of-factly. I took a hole out of my butt cheek. I don't remember when or how it happened, but I just went home and it looked like someone had held a cigarette against my butt cheek and just kept going. The talk show elements of The Eric Andre Show only resemble something like The Tonight Show on the surface. There's a desk and chairs, a suited host, a sidekick, and famous guests. But this program doesn't exist to fawn over celebrities and let them promote their latest projects. The Eric Andre Show sets out to make its guests deeply unsettled. Really having a tough time interviewing people. It's very hard for me. Yeah. Andre told Split Cider, It's fun to see guests out of their comfort zones. We just figured out different ways to psychologically torture the guests. Among the things that different celebrities endured without knowing about it ahead of time, water slowly dripping on them, mild electric shock, and rotten clams placed under their seats. When Clueless star Stacy Dash guessed, a swarm of rats came out to kiss her feet. <laughs> There's more than one. No, we got There's a ton. Many. We got a real problem on our hands. Seemingly knowing what they might face when booking an appearance on The Eric Andre Show, most celebrities just roll with it. Others, however, have bailed. After Andre drew a historically offensive symbol on his forehead and pretended to eat regurgitated food, the Hill star Lauren Conrad walked right off the set. Rapper T.I. cut off his stint on the program when Andre produced a prosthetic male organ and brought a half-undressed man out on stage. Look, don't you touch me, man. <laughs> The vast majority of TV shows air one season per year in successive years, churning out a batch of episodes every fall. The Eric Andre Show doesn't work on such a mainstream or tight time frame, and it never has. According to Hannibal Burris, the show's pilot came together in 2008 and 2009. While Adult Swim didn't announce it, it picked up the show and placed it on its schedule until May 2012, debuting it on air that same month. 
Fans had to wait nearly a year and a half for Season 2, which didn't arrive until October 2013. Season 3 dutifully followed about a year later toward the end of 2014, but then another extremely long wait ensued for Season 4, finally reaching the airwaves in the summer of 2016. True to form, The Eric Andre Show also made fans wait for a fifth season. In October 2019, Entertainment Weekly broke the news that Andre Burris and their disintegrating set will come back to television sometime in 2020. But when exactly? Per the Adult Swim Twitter account, it will be, quote, late in the year. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.